everyone, I'm the Display Lady, welcome back to my channel. In light of going back to school soon, I know some of you are already back at school, but most of us here in the UK, we've got another week yet, just clinging on to that holiday. Um, but I wanted to film this video all about um, behaviour management because I know that it is a hot topic and I know that quite a few of you will be a little bit anxious about your new class and their behaviours. So I've put together this um, list of tips uh, from my experience as a teacher and yeah, I hope you find them useful and um, to enjoy the video. So just before I jump into the video, next week is coming my classroom makeover, classroom transformation, whatever you want to call it. Me sorting out my classroom basically. So if you want to watch that video, hit the bell, hit the subscribe button and uh, you'll be notified when that video comes live next week. So my first tip for behaviour management is uh, creating engaging content, engaging lessons. If the children are not engaged in your what you're teaching or it's too hard, they're not accessing it properly or it's just downright boring, that's when you're more likely to get behaviour problems. So really do consider your content and think about, am I catering for all the children? Because if the answer is no, then you're likely to get behaviour problems. And as a new teacher, you've got kind of all on with the teaching process, never mind trying to figure out, you know, how do I also teach and manage this student who is in crisis at this point maybe because you know some children will get to that point if they think the work is too difficult if they just suddenly feel like they're drowning they will just go straight to crisis because you know we don't all come in in the same kind of frame of mind as each other so it's important that you remember that for the children too in addition sort of linked to this one it's the same tip keep them busy so i always like to have the sheets ready on the tables when they come in and I like to have them kind of laid out in reverse order. So the sheet they need at the top, then the next one, then the next one. So, or whatever it is that they require is there, ready for the lesson. So then the, I'm not faffing about handing things out or, you know, I'm not like, oh, just a minute while I hand these out. Oh, chat time. You need to help minimise the kind of the fuss, the transition periods. You know, how do you want those to look? A lot of people use those Amazon doorbells. I haven't personally use them i'll link one below so you know what i'm talking about um, but i'm considering it to be honest because they do do lots of chimes and rings and things however i'm teacher skin right now because i spend loads on my classroom i feel ashamed but anyway <laughs> I, I do fancy one of those doorbells for my classroom so i will let you know if i do get one but i will link one below so you know what i mean and they come in lots of lo lovely colors so that might be an option for cues for the children so you're not shouting raising your voice over them especially if you're just wanting their attention and that kind of thing so that's tip number one tip number two is relationships so it's the reason this kind of comes up every september is because you don't have a relationship with these children yet or you're not likely to. You might have, you might have taught some of them before. They might be your class from last year, in which case you've got a serious leg up. Um, but generally speaking, you've never taught these children before. So they don't know you, you don't know them. They're gonna try and see what you think is okay and what is not. So you need to try and form those relationships as quickly as possible because once you've got that rapport with the child, it's so much easier then to kind of uh, make a joke about something, you know that child and then you'll know what will calm them down, what will set them off because some children won't appreciate a joke when they're kind of getting angry, they'll just get angrier. So it's really about knowing those children, so really trying to build those relationships as quickly as possible in September. Relationships, really important. Tip number three, don't get drawn into an argument. And then of course, now we can sit here and say, oh no, 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 I would never do that. But when it's the heat of the moment and you're getting <laughs> kind of stressed, kind of your heart rate's going, you're annoyed at something, it's very easy to snap back at a child who's arguing with you. You know, the whole classic, um, so and so, can you stop talking? I wasn't talking. Yes, you were. Don't get drawn into those arguments. It's not a... It's not a question, you're not asking where you're talking, you're saying stop talking, end of, end of discussion. If they want to bite back, don't bite back 
to them, you know, don't get drawn into an argument. It's the same if, if a child's in crisis and they're, they're angry and they're stressed. There's no point having a conversation with that child trying to reason with them or argue with them. They're just going to shout at you. They're just going to argue with you. You might even get sworn at. So it isn't worth it. Don't argue back. You're not having an argument. You're not there to argue with the children. It's unless you're in a, having a debate, which is a completely different thing. So um, my tip number, whatever we're on, <laughs> three, three. I'm so good with numbers. Is um, don't argue back with the children. Don't get drawn into an argument. Tip number four. In lieu of this not into an argument thing, you don't even have to confront that child that's not talking. You use positive language instead. So instead of concentrating on, I don't know, say Sarah's talking, uh, but Jenny, who's sitting next to her, is not. So I would say, oh, well done, Jenny. I can see you're getting on beautifully with that. Well done. And then, you know, I can't remember what I called the child. Sarah, was it? Sarah might be like, oh, okay. She might not, but you know, it's worth a try first. Uh, try and have more positive language in your classroom than negative language. I'd always, if say the children are coming in from playtime, they're all chattering, blah, blah, blah. One of them has sat down and got on with it. Oh, amazing, dojo, health, whatever. Start rewarding that positive behavior instead of right now, quiet down, blah, blah, blah. Well, you've started off negative. Why not try with positives? Then if they're still not being quiet, you know, then you can challenge it. I'm not saying ignore bad behaviour, but there is a sort of, a certain amount of, do I need to challenge this or can I challenge this in a different, more positive way? So my tip number four is positive language. Tip number five is take up time. So say you've asked a child, you know, I want you to be getting on with your work, leave and come back to them in a little bit. Give them chance. Don't get into this kind of standoff where the child's thinking, I'm not getting on my way, and you're like, yes, you are. Try not to get into that kind of situation, you know, check back in with them, like, I'll come back to you on that. Or, you know, um, I'd really like to see you getting on with that. You know, do you think you could have a go at this one? Move away, come back. This is obviously not if the child is actually stuck on a question and then you're going to get some kind of low levels behaviours stemming from this lack of understanding but more if the child's just outright refusing and you'll know that as you know your children that's why the relationship part is so important but um yeah definitely give the children some take-up time you know if you've asked them to do something like can you sit back in your chair you know ignore them carry on teaching the rest of their class and and you know let them let them just do it you know it's not kind of have that expectation, like you are going to do it, so I don't need to further continue that whole line of argument or line of inquiry. Um, you know, I've had children kind of banging on the tables for, you know, attention. Just ignore them. Because if I give that attention, that's exactly what that child wants. So what am I saying? Bang on the table and you'll get my attention. Mm -mm. No, because I don't want that behaviour to continue. More like, get on with your work and then you'll get my attention. Uh, I've kind of uh, jumped ahead to number six with that one. My bad. Number six, <laughs> what is your acceptable? Especially in September, the children are getting a feel of what is acceptable to you and what is not. So, when I say this, like... <sighs> If, you're, if you say silence and the children start low level talking and you don't challenge that, you're saying, when I say silence, talking's acceptable. That is what you are saying with your action. So you need to enforce what you're saying and you can't change your mind halfway through. You can't be having a bad day or you're knackered, we've been there, and you decide, oh, I, can't, I can't be bothered with this today. Well, then you are making a rod for your own back there. And I know that sounds harsh, but it's it's true. Um, if, if you're saying silence, then that is what you need to enforce and what you need to expect. If you don't actually need silence, then say, I don't mind you quietly talking to your partner. You know, be clear with what it is you're expecting because you can't change the rules halfway through. You need to be 
you know, saying, this is my acceptable. When I say this, this is what I mean. And always, always stick to that. So, you know, if I'm saying I want you to work with a partner, well, that's what I, ex I expect. You're not working in a three. You're not working on your own. I want you to work with a partner. If they're struggling with that, then that's a skill that you need to develop. But, you know, you must establish your acceptable. What is your acceptable? And if it isn't acceptable, challenge it and stick to it. Number seven, uh, kind of an important one and more so when behaviour is not going well. I'm really sorry if you can hear my washing machine. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, uh, know when to step away. So, you know, if you're in this heated thing with a child and, you know, this child's in crisis or this child's maybe, maybe this child's hit you, like, I don't know, whatever's happened. Um, or, you know, you're really angry with this child because it's this child's, you know, done something to another child, so you're really angry. So you need to know when to step away and when to let somebody else manage that um, situation. Because if you're getting really, really angry and really involved in the situation and your hands are shaking, you need to step away from that situation because you need to try and, you know, not get too sucked in to these situations with the children and sometimes it's necessary sometimes you need to join their level to bring them back down and all of that but you know if you're actually emotionally involved in that situation and actually feeling like i'm not in control of myself really step away because otherwise something that you don't intend to happen may happen and that would be a disaster so you know know when to step away know when to let somebody else take over a situation and obviously you need to have that restorative conversation afterwards if you've been in this heated exchange with a child so that that's like really important if you've told the child off you need to have a restorative conversation with that child do you understand why i've, I've said that can you understand where i'm coming from you know try and get the children to empathize get them to understand so that's kind of a bonus tip, I guess. Restorative conversations is bonus tip number one. There is a bonus tip number two coming at the end of the video, so keep watching. Uh, number, and I've missed out number eight, so they may not be. <laughs> number eight, seek advice and watch others. So I've learned so much about behaviour management from watching how other teachers handle situations. And it really does come with experience. You know, as an NQT, you've not experienced every situation in terms of behaviour, even in terms of like handling parents um, and things like that. So really do observe how other teachers, I'm really sorry about this washing machine if you can hear it. Um, really do observe how other teachers handle situations because you really can learn from that especially if you're a TA and you're looking to go into teaching really observe how your teacher is handling it or if you're a student how is your mentor handling the behavior because the kids are going to behave differently for the teacher than they are for anybody else and it's just the way of it uh, and some children are better with other people other adults than others at, at my school they don't really cope so well with having a new adult in the room um, so that is quite a difficult challenge for them um, so yeah uh, seek advice watch others learn number 10 is emotions so my, I guess my tip is to try and keep your emotions aside from the behavior it isn't the child it is their behavior that is undesirable you need to try and separate the two you need to try and separate your emotions from the situation uh, that can be really difficult especially when you're a new teacher because you want the kind of to not assert your authority but you do want to be respected and you want the children to know that you mean business um so sometimes when a child's saying you know not very nice things to you or about you that that can be really hard to maintain that facade of you know i'm not going to get involved with this because it hurts. Sometimes the children say things that really hurt your feelings. And, you know, at that moment in time, you need to try to keep your emotions separate. But again, with the whole restorative conversation thing, I would tell the child if they'd hurt my feelings once they'd kind of come out of that, that mood, that zone of crisis of whatever they're in. You know, you know your children, of course, but some of the children might be inclined to say, you know, when you said that, that that actually quite hurt my feelings, you know. Say they might have said, like, I don't want to be in your class or whatever. You might say something like, that really hurt my feelings because I really love having you in my class. 
Because a lot of these children that try and push us away the most are the children that actually need us the most. And that is what is so difficult as a human being. You know, you've, you have got your own feelings. Uh, nobody's saying you don't and nobody's saying you shouldn't, but you know, you've got to put them aside to a certain extent. And you know, all the children should feel like they're welcome and they're loved in your room. And the children that push you away the most are the children that need you the most. So that is one of the biggest challenges I find sometimes when you are really being pushed away as a human, as a person, it's so hard, you know, but you must love, love, love that child more than ever. Um, and my last tip, number 10, which was going to be my bonus tip, but apparently I can't count, um, <laughs> is consistency is king. I've said this before, I'm going to say it again, I'll say it a hundred times. You must be consistent. You must keep your behaviour expectations right up here where you, not off the camera, uh, right up here where you start in September. You must be consistent with your behaviour management, just with everything you do, in fact. If I'm not accepting you not in the line, I'm not accepting that any day, no matter whether it's Monday, Friday, last day of term, no, it's a no-go zone. Consistency is king in terms of your behaviour management. Because even if your behaviour management isn't pitch perfect and ooh, you get sometimes sucked into these arguments and we've all been there, we've all been there, nobody's perfect, but your consistency is what is going to keep that class, um, you know, operating where you expect. It, it kind of harks back to my previous point, was it number four, about what is your acceptable and consistency with your acceptable is absolutely essential so that is my last tip i hope you enjoyed don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell if you want to see my classroom transformation next week and give this video a thumbs up if you thought some of the tips were good if you've got any tips of your own leave them in the comments because the people that are watching this video might be really grateful and thankful for those comments and ideas so thank you so much i appreciate you all so much I'll see you next time. Bye.